So okay, today we'll uh, today we'll start uh, efficiency chapter five, the relationship part of it. Now this is the most difficult part. See, in every in our daily life, we have to have relationships, right? At home, we have father, mother, husband, wife, children, parents, household, maid servants, whatever workers. Then in church, we have one another to submit to then uh, neighbors we have all kinds of relationships in this world you cannot avoid relationship so a person who totally avoids a relationship is called a very unsocial person now what's the problem with being unsocial you don't sin you are not going to fight with anybody you're not going to have problems with others but when you need help nobody's going to come to you you have to have relationships otherwise who's there for you when you have trouble, who will come to you? So man cannot live in an island. Man has to have some relationships or the other. Now there is this, uh, there is a boy who comes, he's considered autistic. He's, uh, I mean, I don't understand autism. It's uh, autism is a wide spectrum. He's very brilliant, but he has certain qualities. He's very antisocial. He doesn't like to talk to anyone. He doesn't like to have any friends. But for some reason, he likes me very much. He will tell his mother, if you want, I will go to auntie's house. So I don't know what. So I believe it is the Lord in me that is loving him and he is able to get attracted to God in me. But anyway, so I keep telling him, how can you live your life without relationship? He finds every relationship redundant. What is the use of marrying what's the use of having children what's the use of being in this relation why do you need people so i told him you cannot live without people around you now you're in school he doesn't go to school he goes to online school he cannot get along with children in his own school he's so brilliant that he finds talking to normal people very cumbersome uh, he can't talk to normal people he can only talk to people of his intellectual level so I told him there will come a day when you will need help. For that, you have to call on to people. And if you don't want to have any relationship with people, when that day comes, whom will you go to? So I'm trying to work on him about relationship because he just feels it's not needed at all. Now, relationships is the biggest problem on this earth, right? Between countries, you can't have good relationships, so you have wars. People in the household, within the household, is any household perfectly, running perfectly smoothly? No, there will be differences of opinion between husbands and wives and children and parents and households and all. There will be differences of opinion. But how do we resolve it? Now, from God's point of view, how does God see relationships? Okay, so now we are going to enter into the narrow way. Okay, narrow way. Jesus said that he, what did Jesus say? No, yeah. He said, it's a narrow way. You're going to enter into a narrow gate. So what is that narrow gate? So, so far we've been saying that Jesus came that we may have abundant life. Jesus came that we may have, we are the blessed of the Lord, the favored of the Lord. We are the healed of the Lord. These are the privileges given to children of God. Okay, they are right. The Bible says that uh, God gives his children prosperity. I'm not preaching prosperity gospel. But for Israel, prosperity was a blessing. And Israel is a microcosm of how God deals with his children, the church. So God did bless them financially. God healed them. He said, none of the diseases of the Egyptians will come upon you. But he said, you have to be witnesses of my righteousness and my holiness. So God was very particular about that. He said, you have to show the surrounding nations that you worship a God of righteousness and holiness. For that, you have to be righteous and holy. That is why God said, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob. He said, look at their lives and you will understand the God whom they worship, right? So the whole gospel can be summed up in one word, a few words. We need to love God, we need to follow righteousness and holiness of God. We need to be witnesses of his righteousness and holiness. And he is a God who blesses us even on this earth. Right? 
he will bless us on this earth seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you you don't you just have to believe he will heal you you don't have to run behind healing you seek righteousness run behind righteousness and the kingdom you will get healed i know pastors i know one pastor especially in bangalore uh, he said i believe in healing but i have not run behind healing but as i taught righteousness and holiness in my church he said i only taught righteousness and holiness of course it's a little on the extreme righteousness and holiness uh, you know wearing don't wear jewelry don't wear that it's a little on the extreme that doesn't matter let's not take everything but you know he said i taught righteousness and holiness and i got healed i have everything i needed i left a lucrative job but now i have all the money i have my four sons are doing very well in life i followed righteousness and holiness and all these things were added unto me so it is part of the gospel so we we are not preaching any particular prosperity gospel where we run behind god only to get good things out of him these are some of the privileges that he is giving to his children who follow righteousness and holiness okay now there are two sides to in any company you work you work no in a bank there are two sides you worked you know in a bank you worked in lm okay good you worked in lnw so there are two things that are expected one is a list of privileges you will get of course you you might be you might have got a lot of privileges you know whatever salary whatever whatever then the second is responsibilities right privileges and responsibility now will the privileges be given to you if you don't uh, discharge your responsibilities you can't you cannot like let's say that you are working in a bank anyone working in a bank uh, so you will get loans at 1% interest you will get lot of privileges you will get those privileges only if you discharge your responsibilities right so that is very important the privileges will come to you automatically once you discharge your responsibilities correctly so the same thing happens in the kingdom of god so let's not forget about the privileges god says i will bless you i will favor you i will give you health i will give you wealth these are the privileges that come with certain responsibilities and the responsibilities is god is saying follow my righteousness and holiness that is the responsibility for anybody working in the kingdom of god it is not follow healing it is not following prosperity these things will come upon us these things will come upon us we don't i just have to believe that god is a god who will heal i only have to believe god will prosper i don't have to run behind it i don't have to do any of those things but i follow this kingdom his righteousness and his holiness now the big part of holiness comes in relationships okay now all of us are not working in the kingdom directly so he is a pastor he is working for god's kingdom so you are all doing some work regina today only i was talking about regina is that she is uh, such an excellent pastor's wife padri amma as we call in our churches you know and i was just talking about her so she has some responsibilities that she has to discharge now there are other people preeti looks after the food and there are some responsibilities and don't think that her responsibility is less than others she has to be committed to what she is given regina has to be committed to what so all these are certain platforms that you have to work in now every christian now every christian is not doing what regina is doing or what violet akka she is looking after the her job is highly responsible she's looking after the money right money is it can make you a judas or it can make you a, a very faithful follower of christ so very highly responsible now uh, the children are looking into music but i'm sure there are a whole lot of people here in this church who are not doing anything directly for the church or directly for a ministry or directly for a kingdom but all these people every human being every person in the church is involved in some relationship right either he is a son he is a she is a daughter or husband or wife or mother or father or or sister sister in law daughter daughter in law right you 
cannot, no Christian is devoid of relationship. And God says there's a huge responsibility in working out relationships according to the plan of God. There's tremendous blessings in working out relationships according to God's will. Honestly, I myself can say that, uh, you know, like first we'll talk about husband and wife because that's the first thing that comes. Um, I have seen, I have witnessed in families where the wife is a wife according to the will of God. The husband is a husband according to the will of God. There's tremendous, tremendous blessings in the families to at least three generations. Three generations, I say tremendous blessings in families. Not because the second generation is very good or the godly or the third generation is very godly, but the relationships really bless even non-Christians. Even non-Christians who follow these principles, even for them blessings come. Now, if you, I'll just show it as a diagram for you to understand how these blessings flow. So all blessings... Where are all these blessings of God? Where is it put? There's one treasure house. God has put all blessings in one treasure house. Which is the treasure house? This one big treasure house. God has put every blessing in that treasure house. The fullness of God dwells in Jesus Christ. Everything is in Christ. He is the treasure. He is the treasure house. I think we have done Second Peter. No, All things are in Christ. We need to receive from Christ everything God has put in Jesus Christ. Now, when we say we have not been healed, we are, we are trying to say we have not received the healing that is in Christ. Everything that one needs for life and godliness is put in Jesus Christ. So let's look at Second Peter. I think we have done this many times, but please underline it if you have not underlined it before. Sorry, First Peter. 1 Peter 1, chapter 1, no, no, 2 Peter only, 2 Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 3 is, Divine power has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. His divine power has given us all things, not some things, all things, 2 Peter 1, 3, 2 Peter 1, 3. All things pertaining to life and godliness. There is nothing a human being needs outside life and godliness. Okay, Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By giving to us exceedingly great and precious promises. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. And escaping the corruption that is in this world. So through a knowledge of Jesus Christ you receive every blessing needed for life and godliness. There is nothing we want outside of life and godliness. Right? We need things for godliness. We need things for life. And all that is put in Jesus Christ, he is the treasure house, and we receive from him. So actually, when I am not receiving something, it is not that God has not given it. He's already put everything in this treasure house. It's like somebody saying, mm, how could God put him in hell? God has not put anybody in hell. He has put salvation in Christ. And God is saying, through knowing my son, you take that gift. Anybody who goes to hell, he goes to hell, not because God has not given him salvation, but because he has not wanted it. He has not gone and received it from Jesus Christ. Right? God doesn't, he doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He wants everybody to come to the his, the knowledge of God and be saved. That's the intention of God. So everything is in Christ. Now, so it is a perfect flow. God to Jesus Christ is a perfect flow. Okay? Then after that, there are relationships through which you receive the uh, you receive the blessings through a lot of relationship. So after Jesus Christ, you have the man or the husband and you have the wife. We are just talking about husband and wife because that's the next verse. Huh? And the wife who is submissive to the husband. That's why I said we have come to the narrow gate. Submissiveness and all belongs to the narrow way. Okay. So now... If you realize from the beginning when God created man, now why do you need somebody to be in authority and somebody to be in submission? 
Why can't both be equally in authority? No, why not both husband and wife take authority together? Why should wife submit to the husband? That's a hierarchy. But um, uh, can you, can you right. tell? Right. Correct. See, even right from the beginning, God created Adam independently. But how did he create Eve? He created Eve from Adam. He didn't create Eve independently. So from the beginning, the woman or the church was supposed to come out of Adam. Meaning she is part of him and she comes out of him and she is his helper. Okay, she's not independent. Okay, but what is the problem with man and wife both being in authority? Just common sense, it's a common sense question. Chaos. There will be chaos. Why? Because two people cannot be the same. Because no two people can be the same. If both of them are in authority, there will be chaos, right? She will say, I think I am right, and he will say, I think I am right. So, God has instituted man to be, he takes authority, but taking authority doesn't mean you use your authority to trouble the wife. You use your authority to make things more uh, easy to work around in the house. That is why God has given man authority. And wife, why is she asked to submit to the husband? For her safety. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Whom did God uh, tell, do not eat that fruit? Did God tell Eve? God told, did God tell Eve? God told Adam and Adam told Eve, right? So God told Adam and God expected Adam to take authority over his wife. He used to tell his wife, look, listen to God. You know, instead, she acted independently and she made him also sin by listening to her. Man listened to his wife. Man was submissive. Adam was submissive to Eve instead of Eve being submissive to Adam. So that is where things went wrong and God instituted, he said, your desire will be for your husband. You have to listen to your husband. Why? Because Eve did not listen to her husband. None of the problems of mankind would have happened if Eve listened to her husband. But Adam also made a mistake. When he, I mean, I don't think she, you know, the Satan tempted her and immediately she took the fruit. I think the Bible says she no, looked Adam, at it. Adam had told because when, when Satan yeah, told, told yes, him, yes. She added to what? Yeah. Uh, Adam told her, but he didn't do it with authority. He did not, see, he was there. He was there. It says that um, Adam was with her. I believe there was a time gap because I don't think she immediately took the fruit and ate it. I think because it's, the Bible says she looked at the fruit, found out, felt it was desirable to eat. So there must have been some time gap and Adam was always with his wife and he must have noticed that her mind was changing. Will any husband know when the wife's mind is changing? No, you don't know. I think the serpent came it's easy to know about your spouse. I know even if I don't look at him, I will know what is there, there in his mind. And he will know even, I don't have to even look here, there he will know what is there in me. Because, you know, you're living in such close atmosphere and there's only two of them, Adam and Eve, nobody else, right? He didn't take authority and said, if you touch that fruit, I will not talk to you. You know, do you know that God is our creator and what God says we both have to obey? I don't care what somebody said. I don't care whether the fruit looks good to eat. I don't care whether it will give you greater wisdom. But you are not to touch the fruit. Adam should have taken authority over Eve. Because God gave Adam the command. God did not give Eve the command. God expected Adam. Because, you know, when he blessed Adam and Eve, he gave that authority, he gave authority to man. And the biggest problem in today's world is the people who should take authority, they do not take authority. Men don't take authority over their wives. They just allow their wives to do what they want, what they desire, because they're a little scared, they don't want fights or whatever. Women are not submissive to their husbands simply because they feel the husbands are wrong. They feel 
this is what he says is not right. But we need to go back to the word of God. The word of God is perfect, right? God is perfect. The word of God is perfect. Obviously, Jesus Christ is in the same position as man. If you read Ephesians, you will understand. Jesus Christ is in the position of man and the wife is in the position of the church. And it says just like Jesus and the church is one. I am in Christ and Christ is in me. It's a spiritual oneness. I am in the body of Christ and Christ in his spirit lives in my spirit. I am in Christ, Christ is in me. We are spiritually one. Like that, if man and woman, they are no longer two, but one. So this is the relationship that God expects man to have. Now, if the wife is not submissive to her husband, then it is like church rebelling against Jesus Christ. Which church will be blessed? Which rebels against Jesus Christ. Church has to respect Jesus Christ can be submissive to Jesus Christ. Only then the church will be blessed. So now we will discuss this bit a little more. Because the Bible says very clearly that he was deceived. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 it says he was deceived but Adam was not deceived. Why did Adam eat the fruit? <laughs> he knew one thing. Adam knew God. It says Adam spoke to God. Every day Adam would speak to God. He knew keeping the commandments of God was of utmost importance. Otherwise God said you will die. Now Adam didn't know what it is to die. There was no death in the garden of Eden. He didn't know what it is to die. But he knew that it was very serious. The commandment was a very, very serious commandment. And you cannot break that commandment. So now the reason Adam took the fruit is... I think, see, he is he had only animals to live with for a long time. Then God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Let me create a helper. And for the first time, he found somebody whom he could talk to on his level. You can't talk to an animal at your level. For, for the first time, he could talk to somebody at his level. And he knew one thing. This lady, if she eats that apple, she seems bent on eating the apple. This lady will be thrown out of the garden. She will die. And he could not think of a life without her. If she dies, let me die with her. So that is the height of love. Okay? She dies, let me die with her. I don't want to live a life in this beautiful garden, perfect garden, without this lady that God has uh, created only for me. So if you read First Timothy, second chapter... 13. For Adam was formed first and then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she'll be saved in childbearing if she continues in faith, love, holiness, with self control. Okay, that's a, that verse, we will not deal with that now. But Adam was not deceived, meaning Adam knew perfectly well the consequences of disobedience to God. But he was deceived. So one problem man has is that the fallen man, one problem he has is he doesn't take sufficient authority. Man doesn't take sufficient authority in the house. I know many, many families that have totally collapsed, not because of anything, not because the husband is bad. He doesn't take sufficient authority with his wife or with his children. You know, the children manipulate their fathers, right? They manipulate their fathers and they will say, we don't want this, we don't want that, just give me this. Like that um, prodigal son, no? just give me your property and just went and just wasted. Men don't take authority in the house. If a son will say, I don't want, I did one year engineering, I don't want to do any more engineering. It's too difficult for me. And the father says, okay, darling, it's okay, forget it, go and do something else. You know, or the wife starts saying something, I, I don't want this, I don't want to do what you're telling me to do, I want to do that. Man has to come to the Lord and ask the Lord to give him the courage to take authority. You need courage because the wife might take some plate and throw it at him and all kinds of things may happen. So it's not easy. I mean, I haven't done it, but I've heard some things like this. These things also happen. But so it's not easy to take. Huh? 
<laughs> Blind sauces. Blind sauces, yeah. So it's not easy to take authority, but that is something man has to take. If he wants the blessings of God to fall upon the family, man has to take authority. Now, taking authority, is it easy? Is it easy? Not all the time. Not all the time. So, uh, why is it not easy? Why it's easy? You know, it's like I'm the principal of a college. I just have to say, do this and do that. Do this and this could be done. Why is it not right. easy? You, if you know it is correct, then you can take authority. Is it right? Even if you know something is right, is it easy to take authority? And the men can say no. They're all scared of their wives. <laughs> I can say today, I can say my husband is not there. I can say today. <laughs> now, what is the real reason men are scared to take authority? Now, what are the problems involved? Not uh, what are the problems involved in taking authority? Now, let's look at the man as Jesus Christ. Did Jesus Christ take authority? Jesus. Wherever, even yes. though it cost him. You know, he spoke to the, the leaders of the Jewish nation. He said, you're whitewashed tombs. You devour widows' houses. And you will go to hell. You will perish. Can you imagine talking like that to the leaders of your society, of your country? Jesus took authority. He whipped. He took a whip. Can you imagine any pastor or leader doing that in any church? He took a whip and said, how dare you make my father's house a den of thieves. Jesus took, I mean, Jesus was the exact opposite of Adam. It says Adam, you know, he kept, his wife was admiring the fruit and he also was standing with his wife and admiring her. She was the most beautiful person that was ever created. Adam didn't know there was, there's no other woman in Adam's time. This beautiful woman, everything about this woman must have been a stunning revelation to this guy. Right, Adam? And whatever she said would have been a, nothing would have gone through his mind. He was so captivated by this lady. You know, you know, wars, you know, Antony and Cleopatra. Antony was supposed to go to Egypt to conquer Egypt. And he saw this beautiful queen of Egypt called Cleopatra. Just forgot about war. He forgot about what he was supposed to do there. He just spent time just being with Cleopatra. Because she was so stunning. He forgot about everything. Whatever he was commanded to do. So this is the, I think, position that Adam, he was not deceived. He knew very well what was going on. But what, see, there's one fundamental. What happens when you take authority? Fundamental, one problem happens when you take authority. It is like a two edged sword. So whatever. It is like a two You are getting into a clash with the person. You are getting into a war with the person. And we don't want to get into a war. We don't want a war because war is trouble for our minds. When a man takes authority, the problem is he has to ex expect the wife to. No, she will shout back at him. That is the major reason I think all of you, even if you're not married, you can foresee a time when you will be married. And isn't that a very difficult task too? <laughs> but that is a major problem. You don't want to enter into a confrontation with your wife. Fight with your wife. Now, if the wife is a perfectly submissive wife, a man does not have problem taking authority. But that doesn't happen. Wives have to learn to be submissive. Right? No, but you are, my husband said he saw you making horlicks and <laughs> she was nearly fainting because she was... Uh, uh, fasting and so he said he saw him making horlicks and all. it's a good husband you are a good husband so but um, that see we need to the <laughs> violet is getting shot <laughs> okay <laughs> so we need to learn to be submissive man's nature is not to be submissive man's nature is to have his own e man means man and woman we have our own ego 
we want to assert our own ego our own independence that is how fallen man is created now if you look at the child you know i'm observing i'm observing my grandchild you know all the fallen nature is there in in the child even at a very young age she wants what i want if i take away what she wants ah she screams because she has independent views it's not every child is born with a fallen nature we find it cute because she's a child right we don't find it cute in husbands i want it this way no wife will like it right so but that fallen nature is there from the time we are born that we all want to assert our independence what i say is what should be followed that is how man and woman thinks so man finds it so difficult to assert his authority but so if a man doesn't assert his authority what happens the wife will take the exactly the wife will take the place of authority she will look to her husband he is not opening his mouth he is keeping quiet okay let me assert my independence exactly what eve did okay that's exactly what eve did husband is not saying anything he is not using his authority to tell her this is what god said no so she decided to use her authority and even make adam sin so easily he just took the fruit and he ate right it was very easy so if now in an army in a army setting you know there are people who are waiting for the commander to give a command now if there's no commander who gives a command what will the people in the army do they won't move they won't move so if there is no commander somebody else has to be appointed so you will have um, uh the army what is uh, colonel and uh, lieutenant colonel so if the colonel is out the lieutenant colonel has to take over so somebody has somebody will take over if the main person is not there to give authority so husbands have to understand if a husband is weak the wife will take authority now what happens if the wife takes authority let's say she's a good woman she's taking authority for doing good things what will happen to the house house what do you think will happen if the woman takes authority what will happen to the house husband is just keeping quiet i don't want any tension already too much attention in the job now after coming home i cannot fight with my wife you do what you want and the wife takes authority in the house what happens why do you think god told the wife be submissive to your husband he felt women are inferior he lasa young people so that they will become good husbands huh <laughs> why do you think god told uh, uh told wives to why has god commanded wives to be submissive to their husbands stability stability i think it's for her protection it's her protection if eve had listened to her husband she would have been protected from eternal destruction God is saying Eve it's because you did you were not submissive to your husband that you took yourself and your husband and led the entire mankind to eternal destruction if you had obeyed my commandment you would have been protected adam would have been protected and the rest of mankind would have been protected i think it is for your safety god is giving a commandment for woman's safety for her protection see i think the role of being submissive is easier than the role of taking authority yeah huh? i think so i really think because authority means i have to be sure that what i'm saying i have heard from god or it is the right thing i have to be sure it's not a wrong decision i'm making okay so um so is it which is easier to be be submissive is very easy okay you are saying that okay fine i will obey it's easier for me unless of course he is a totally different kind of a person who's not at all obedient to god's will you are not asked to marry a non believer like that you are asked to marry a believer so if a husband is a reasonable man a believer and a reasonable person obeying him is my protection if it is my protection 
then why should I not obey this man? So that is one thing women don't understand. Women, you know, it's all about freedom. Today the world is about freedom. My rights, I have to, I need my rights. The moment it strikes me, God gave this commandment for women so that I don't make mistakes. Because through my husband, God will give me, a, a, see when God, because God has given woman the commandment to be submissive to the husband, when she obeys her husband, there will be a blessing only for her. Even if he's not even saying things that are right, even then it will turn out to be a blessing. Can you give me an example from the Bible? What about Abraham and Sarah? Abraham said, you please tell you I am your brother so that nobody will attack me. What happens to you is your problem, not my problem. You go, you just protect me. She called him Lord. She obeyed him at the risk of being raped or being killed or whatever. And who protected her? God took up arms for Sarah. Because she was an obedient wife, she was a submissive wife, God said, you touch her, you will see what will happen to your entire nation. That is the power of obedience. Abraham was not a, um, a good husband in this respect. In this area, he was not. He was pretty selfish. I don't want anybody to touch me. That's all. He didn't care so much about what would happen to Sarah. In those days, see, women were considered, see, it's not that Abraham was a bad person. In those days, women were just considered like objects. This was not a very bad thing in those days. But even then, Abraham didn't act according to the way Jesus Christ would act for the church. He acted like a normal, selfish human being, right? That's all. But Sarah did what Abraham, now anybody will do what Sarah did. Okay, okay, let them do anything to me. I'll call you Lord. I'll call you Master. I will do everything. Sarah really did it. That is why even the commentary on says, you are children, daughters of Sarah, if you are submissive. Now, this is why I'm saying you're entering into a narrow way. The broad way is very different. Broad way is, you treat me well, I will treat you well. You don't treat me well, I will divorce you. Okay, I will marry only a person who listens to me. That is the broad way. This is a very narrow way. Even when you are selfish, even when you are not acting like Christ, when I obey you, God himself will be my support. God will support me. God will lead me out of every trouble. So that's why I say it is a very narrow way. Because it's, we cannot wait for our husbands to become perfect and then submit to our husbands. Men cannot wait for their wives to become submissive and then take authority. The moment you are married, the Bible commands the husband take authority at home. The Bible commands the wives be submissive to your husband. That's tremendous, tremendous blessings in the family where the husband and the wife take their roles very, very seriously. And even the children, and I have seen such blessings to my own mother, I have never seen a wife who's so submissive. Both my mother and my father were equally educated. Both were PhDs. Both had the same job. They were both professors in IIT. Both earned the same salary. My mother was earning, uh, my mother was a working woman in a generation where women were not working at all. There were hardly any women who were working. My mother was a very independent woman earning a salary equivalent to that of her husband. If same thing, the same age also, same status also, everything was there. But my mother, when she came to the Lord, the Lord spoke to her and said, you be submissive to your husband. And till, I mean, till my father just died recently, my father controlled everything. He controlled the checkbook. He decides, my mother will ask him what I want and my father will give. I mean, it doesn't happen today. Everybody owns their own uh, bank balance. So my father did everything. He was the boss. He did everything. I mean, he did everything right. I'm not saying he did anything wrong. But that was, it was like the man controlled. You know, I, I, when I look at my mother now, I'm just thinking, I said, how many women will give complete control over their finances, everything to their husband? Especially when you are earning, you are doing, getting all that. How would anybody just give it completely? If my father said, no, you don't need this, 
she will say, okay, I don't know this. There is no, like, I, it's, it, I mean, very difficult to understand that in today's culture. But that was how it was in that generation. And I still think my brother and I, we believe that much of our blessings is because of my mother's godliness and my mother's submissiveness. And it will go down. I've seen families where the wife is a wife according to God's commandment. There is a blessing. Even wives who are not Christians. You know, non-Christians, it's a very funny thing. But among non-Christians, they are very submissive wives. It is the Christians who are not submissive wives. I don't know why that is so. Non-Christians, they are very submissive wives. And there's such a blessing in the family because of the submissiveness of the... Uh, I don't know, for some reason, Satan is attacking Christian women. In an Indian context, when I say this, it may be okay. You preach the same thing in America, they will all walk out of the rooms. Because it's impossible. The culture does not permit this kind of thinking. That somebody should be submissive to another human being. Because the culture itself is a highly independent culture. So it's unthinkable for an American woman to even accept things like this. Now, this can involve a lot of things. The husband gets into a lot of trouble because it's not easy for the wife to be submissive and for her to say things, uh, uh, be totally submissive to her husband. Is it easy? Is it easy for wives to be submissive? Hmm? Virginia? We can break the voice and uh, we can give our... Okay, okay. Now, we can we raise our voices? Can we say our opinions? No problem. The problem, we, it's not like don't say your opinion. It's nothing like that. We need to, we can talk it out. We can say what we think is right. Husband may change his opinion because of what we say. The problem is when the husband refuses to take the wife. See, most of the time, the problem that occurs is selfishness. It's, I want my, I want to do things my way. Please don't bother me. Don't ask me to do things your way. It is too difficult. But uh, that's uh, that's a good. Uh, no, what you're saying. Even I, I feel. See, God has given me this commandment so that I'm protected. I don't have to worry if my husband has taken. This, it's your fault. Not my fault. You only said no. So you did it. No, it's your fault. So you can give her opinion or the view. Uh, but the wife doesn't need to expect that husband should do Exactly. That. Yeah. Yeah. We can give our opinions. But the final decision Yeah, be it's his. That. Yeah. The final decision should be his. So now what are the practical problems involved in this? The real practical problems involved in day-to-day -day life. Raising children, finances, before children come, finances, what do you use your money for? Huh? Then? Taking care of them partly like or the women as all Or women work and they have to do work at home. Then? What about in-laws? You have forgotten about that. Uh, the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems in uh, that brings about marital problems is in-laws, right? I always feel instead of giving counseling to the groom and the, the bride and the groom, you should give counseling to also the parents yeah. because somehow they get so involved and causes problems between the bride and the groom, right? Now, in Indian society, if you are marrying a family, you are not even marrying a boy or a girl, you are marrying a family. So now in that context, what does the husband do? He will be scratching his head. Should I please, if I please my wife, my mother will get angry. If I please my mother, my wife will get angry. So how does he take authority in those areas? Suppose your mother also is living in the house. Who takes authority? But should she take authority? See, now the husband has left his parents. Wife has left. They both are come together and they are one. And the man takes authority. The mother is under. He takes authority and tells his mother, look, this is your place. Tells his wife, this is your place. And for the well, for the, uh, for the house to work comfortably, you please adhere to your positions. 
So it's not right for a son should take care of his mother. Obviously, he should take care. If possible, let the parents live separately. If possible, let the children live separately. If not possible, you still have to adjust. But in all areas, I have at least after 32 years of marriage, I have felt that God's word is so good. God's word is right. God's word is a blessed word. If I listen to God's word, it will only give me blessings. So I have lived with my mother-in-law for 20 years. It was not easy, in, but I always went to the Lord and said, Lord, I am I'm determined to obey you because I want all your blessings. I want your blessings, Lord, so I am determined to obey your word. So give me the wisdom. How do I handle it? How do I talk to my mother? How do I keep her happy? And God is a faithful God. If you want to obey God, he will give you the wisdom to handle a husband, a mother-in-law, children, everybody. He will give you the wisdom to handle perfectly. But if you say, Lord, I cannot do what my husband says. I refuse to do what he says. I refuse to fall in with authority. Then you will not get any wisdom from God. So your first turn should be, Lord, I want to obey your commandments. What you say is a blessing for me. But give me the wisdom to handle it. A man should say, Lord, I want to obey your commandments. I want to take authority. But my mother is such a difficult person. My wife is such a difficult person. Both of them won't get along. Lord, I cannot do it. I will ask one person to do it. Then you will not see the blessing of God. You have to tell the Lord, no matter what happens, I want to obey your commandments. Then the wisdom of God will come upon the man to do his role and the wisdom of God will come upon the woman to do the role that she does. And I have, I found that there was a time, I am a very uh, independent kind of a person and I was the eldest child, so everybody listened to me. Even my parents, they made big out of anything I said. I said. You know, like my parents thought that I was so wise and everything I said was very good. So I got used to feeling that I am, you know, um, the wonderful wisdom is upon me. Till I got married and I had a husband who thinks he was all wise. So it was a bit of a clash and it used to clash from everything. If I wanted white color on the walls, he will say we will have pink color on the walls. Something he will say differently. And we used to, and we start with small things but end you know, that day you said this, and he'll say, I have no memory. I'll say, no, you said it. So it all goes on like that. Till the Lord brought me to Ephesians chapter 5. And he told me, I cannot change laws. Whether you're right or wrong, I cannot change laws. You submit to my laws. And that's when I started seeing tremendous blessings because I just said yes to everything he said. And he got the shock of his life. He's saying, nowadays you're not arguing at all. Everything I say, you're saying yes. I said, yeah, did you read Ephesians chapter 5? I read Ephesians chapter 5. God said, this is what I want. See, and then he himself understood it's so true. So he started counseling other people. And there were a lot of our friends who had, you know, same thing, ego. You know, a lot of ego clashes. They all changed. So many of our Bible study friends, they all changed because we saw the truth and blessing in this commandment. And nothing happened because I submitted to him. My Nothing happened to my ego. Nothing. I was protected. When he said something and I agreed to it, it just fell into place. Because God's blessing is upon that husband who takes authority. God's blessing is upon the wife who is very submissive. So with that, we'll just read what is there in Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 22, Ephesians 5, 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands. See, there are many wives who like, you know, I, I'm very, you know, when other men say something, I say, how nice this man is. He's saying nice things to me. My husband is so cool. He's not saying nice. You know, other men give you compliments. You feel very good. How nice. My husband never gives me compliments. But the Bible says, wives, submit to your own husbands, not to what other people say about you. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. This is the word of God. The husband is the head of the wife. This is God's word. And I cannot change it. If I change it, I will not get any blessings. As Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. 
you know, uh, if ever I get into a confrontation with my husband, I will immediately go and tell sorry. My husband will say, if I get, if he has a fight with me, he says, before I go to the hospital and I start doing a case, he said, before I pray, God is telling me, you first forgive your wife. Otherwise, something will happen to the patient. He's saying, I'm scared because God won't hear my prayer. So, you know, like it should be for both of them. I should also feel sorry that I went against the will of God. My husband also should feel sorry that he went against the will of God. And both of them should come to an agreement because otherwise Satan will take control of the situation. So Satan is waiting for wives to be rebellious against husbands and husbands to not be take authority over their wives. Then Satan will enter into the marriage and break the marriage. But if we are obedient to this commandment, Satan cannot enter into a marriage where the wife is determined to be submissive. So I told the Lord, it's not in my nature. My nature is to take control. My nature is to do things my way. My nature is to feel I am wiser than my husband. That is my original nature. So I told the Lord, Lord, I am willing to do what you tell me to do. But you, and God said, I'll give you the ability and the power to do it. See, God only is looking for our choice. What is my choice? Not my ability. I have to say, Lord, I'm zero. I have zero abilities before God. I can't do one thing the right way. But Lord, I can make a choice the right way. I can choose to do the right thing. And God will empower me to do the right thing. Right? So it's not like I am that kind of a person. No, I am not one of those. Um, I mean, even with my mother-in-law, I mean, like 20 years, it was smooth sailing because my mother-in-law also was a believer. My mother-in-law will come and tell me sorry. She said, no, what I said to you was wrong. She will come and tell me sorry. I will go and tell her sorry because, you know, we both understood the value of God's word. It's not because... We were wonderful people. No, I'm, I was not wonderful. She was also not wonderful. In fact, when she was eight, uh, just before she went into Alzheimer's, in the 85th year of her life, she came and told me, please tell me my faults. Before I die, I want to ask repentance from God. So I said, why are you asking me? You should ask your children. And then it will be all, if I tell you your faults, then we both will start fighting. So let's. I should not tell you. She said, no, my children are blind to my faults. You know, very wise at that age. She said, my children will not see my faults. They are blinded to my faults. But you will know. And, and I took it seriously. I told her also. And she stopped doing many things after I told her to do it. She was very sincere. She said, I want to go to God when I'm, I'm old now. Before I die, I want to. I can't see my faults, she said. We all can't see our own faults. We can only, but we can see other people's faults very clearly. But our own faults, we cannot see. And I told her, I don't know whether I will have the humility to ask my daughter-in-law that age. Old people are more proud than young people, you know. Yeah. You know, it was humility on her part. She was a person who loved the Lord and wanted to do the things that God commanded us. So I was lucky, but it's not because she was a wonderful person or I was a wonderful person. We both were very strong personalities. I felt very strongly about certain things. She felt very strongly about certain things. But because we both wanted to obey the word of God, it was smooth sailing. In fact, uh, many doctors from the hospital, you know, they used to come and ask me, ma'am, how are you able to get along? Uh, five days, mother-in-law is coming already, tension is coming already, depression is coming. I said, no, in five days, you count one, two, three, four, five, everything is, she goes and everything is back to your old self. So it's a, it's a problem with the relationships, not because anybody is right or wrong. Today's world, there are a lot of problems, problems in relationships, because each one thinks I am right. So it is a definitely it is a problem. We need to go to God. We have to ask God, Lord, help my mother-in-law to see me the way you see me. Help me to see my mother-in-law the way you see her. Let not my husband be torn between his mother and his uh, 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 wife. 
and uh, once i once i told my mother in law this it's a wisdom god gave me i told her this i said i'm sure you want your son to have a stress free and happy life i want my husband to have a stress free and happy life so one way that will happen is if you and i have a good relationship so she said yeah that i understand so i said whatever is a problem let us talk it out let us not fight because if we fight your son is going to suffer he is going to stand in between and suffer so you love your son i love my husband let us not give stress to him somehow it clicked in her so god sometimes gave me wisdom because i said lord because she cannot stay alone my mother in law could not stay alone so i knew she's going to stay with us so i said lord as long as she's alive i don't want people laughing at her. these people are this man is preaching this man is taking bible study look at the house wife and mother are fighting what testimony are we giving to the world the zero testimony given to the world so i and my mother we both said we are personalities are not that easy to get along but if we trust in a god who will take our weaknesses and make it into a strength we both can stay together happily so nearly 20 years she lived with me she stayed with me for 20 years and i'm not saying it was absolutely smooth sailing but we didn't we didn't have big problems we resolved problems we did have problems but we resolved it by the guidance god gave me you know sometimes a bitterness will well up because she said some word i didn't like or something i didn't like you know bitterness will just well up when the word used to tell you just forgive me forgive me forgive me. and don't say don't talk about it don't think about it and you know as we go to, and even she had her own problems she had lot of hurts but as we relied on god's wisdom 100% relied on god's wisdom come i mean surrendering to god and saying lord we are zero we have we have no understanding of managing relationships lord please come into our lives and to the glory of god i can say not only we had a smooth sailing we brought lot of families who had problems we helped them to resolve their problems too first i had to understand how to resolve my problem before i resolve somebody else's but we were a blessing to many other people because we went through you know this kind of total reliance on god to settle our problems even there was a couple who were separated for 10 years and we said no go back and there was a problem with husband there was a problem with mother in law and they all and she went back and the situation was resolved completely all that because we had experienced the power of god in resolving relationships when we totally surrendered to him lord i don't know how to speak one sentence to another person give me the wisdom to say the right things and god's wisdom will flow through you 100% because in this area today we see divorces are so much of divorces today we can't allow that to happen we cannot allow our children to get divorced we have to pray that the wisdom of god will be upon them they may be the wisest human beings but as a husband they may be a failure they may be the most brilliant student but as a wife they may be a failure what is the use of gaining the whole world if your house is in shambles so this is an area where the word of god is a tested and true word so we'll, i'll just finish reading this husbands love your wives just as christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hates his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as the lord does the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh this is a great mystery but i speak concerning the concerning christ and the church Nevertheless let each of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband so we'll talk about the role of the husband it is much higher than the role of a wife it is his duty to present his wife clean blemishless 
he who loves his wife loves himself if i buy a rolex watch for myself i cannot buy a titan watch for my wife he who loves himself sorry sorry he who <laughs> he who loves his wife loves himself if what all you do for yourself you should do for your wife the commandment is different for the wife she respects her husband she submissive but the husband he should be willing to die for her because jesus christ was willing to die for the church he would do anything for the church so i'm just talking the material term is not so much but that is the way a man is commanded to love his wife so a lot of men who do not love their wives lot of men who commit adultery lot of men who run behind other people they are in danger of severe hell fire the commandment is far higher for a husband than for a wife now you will think of all circumstances what if the wife is like this but there are extraordinary christians you take uh, who is that man william carey william carey he was a great evangelist who came to india his wife was mad wife was mad he didn't throw her off she put uh, she lit herself and she set herself on fire and she died till he married only after she died she he lived with her with her madness today people cannot live with a wife who gets angry for one day that is the wife he lived with there are extraordinary christians i'm not saying we should i'm not saying that we all can attain to that but there are a lot of christians who have attained to that level who you know who love their wives like christ of the church and this william carey did i mean you read his history the kind of things he did for india was so 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 remarkable there are heights to which we can go as a christian right and there are depths to which we remain even as being christians so everybody is not called upon to you know love their wives at that kind of uh, you know in the most difficult circumstances but the husband's role is so important much higher than that of the wife's role i even now when i you know when we hear about husbands committing adultery and all kinds of problems are there in society today they are in greater danger when we say husbands or wives should be submissive to the husband the husband has such a high role to play that he doesn't play that role he is in danger of getting reprimanded chastised by god far more than a wife a wife is a weaker vessel and her role is not as uh, as heavy as that of the role of a husband so we'll do that next class and uh, maybe my husband also could talk because uh, we have been counseling a lot of people in this area and sometimes we end up fighting after counseling others <laughs> you know even that danger is there so we have to be protected that the love of god should fill us that lord no matter what sometimes i go back into flesh you know one of the reasons i like taking bible studies keeps me in the word because if i'm not in the word i go back into the flesh i have to come back to the word the word is what keeps us on the safe path it is not our wisdom it is not our fleshly desires go by the word god like god took up arms for sarah the entire a uh, community god said have closed the wombs of everybody because of sarah you know that is the power of a woman who is obedient to god's word god will be strong god will take up uh, his arms against that person so we are moving into narrow way not easy for me to teach not easy for you to listen but god's wisdom is the best wisdom is nothing like god's wisdom.